Hi everybody. In this video we're going to show how to write a product of permutations written in cycle notation as a product of disjoint cycles. What we're basically trying to do is get rid of redundancy in the cycles. So in A, for example, you'll notice that the number 1 shows up in three different cycles. That means you have three different functions that are moving the 1 somewhere. And we want to write this as a product of cycles where you don't have any repetitions in the numbers. So what we're going to do first is not strictly necessary, but it's just to, to prove a point or demonstrate a point here. So I want to convert this product in A into Cauchy notation. So since I have the numbers 1 through 6 being permuted, I'll write those. And now I want to check where each of these numbers goes individually. So first I'll look at 1. And I know that when I want to test 1, it has to go into these three functions, starting with the rightmost function, 3, 1. And I say, okay, where does 1 go? When I put it into the first function, 1 turns into a 3. Now that output 3 is what's going to go into the next function. So I put a 3 into the next function, and it spits out a 6. Now this 6 is what's going to go into the next function, to the left. And when I put a 6 in, well, there is no 6 in this cycle, so I know it actually is going to spit out a 6 again. So in total, 1 first went to 3, then the 3 went to a 6, and the 6 stayed a 6. So 1 total went to 6. Now let's check 2. So 2 would go into the first cycle and not change anything, right? Because this only swaps 3 and 1. So 2 goes into the second cycle, and there 2 gets mapped to 3. And then a 3 goes into this third cycle, and the 3 is mapped to 4. So in total, 2 mapped to 4. All right, now let's check 3. So let's see here. We can clean up a bit. And the first thing happens is you put the 3 in, and it turns into a 1. Now the 1 goes into the next cycle, and the 1 turns into a 2. And then the 2 goes into the next cycle, but there is no 2 in it, so it spits out a 2. So in total, 3 goes to 2. Right. Now we'll check 4. Well, 4 is missing from the 3, 1 cycle. It's also missing from the 2, 3, 6, 1. But it does show up in the, the third cycle, this 3, 4, 1, 5, and 4 goes to 1. All right, I'm going to check 5. And a 5, just like 4, is missing from the, the rightmost and the second uh, cycle, but it does show up in the last one where 5 goes to 3. All right, now there's only one place left for 6 to go, which is, is 5. I can see that because it's the only number missing. But let's check that that's what actually happens. So 6 doesn't get moved around by the 3, 1. It does get sent to 1 in the second cycle, and then 1 gets sent to 5 in the third cycle. So sure enough, 6 is sent to 5. Okay, now that's how we convert everything into Cauchy's notation. Now we know how to convert back to cycle notation, so let's do that. So I first look at where does 1 go, and we know 1 went to 6. Where does 6 go? We look and say, oh, 6 went to 5. 5 was mapped to 3, 3 was mapped to 2, 2 was mapped to 4, and 4 is mapped back to 1. So we actually get this cycle. All right. So in fact, it's a product of cycles, but the product only has one factor in it. All right. Now, if we were doing this for real, we usually would not convert back to Cauchy's notation. We just go straight to it. And we'll do it in the following way. We'll say, all right, first, where does 1 go? And we say, well, 1 goes to 3, 3 goes to 6, and then 6 is fixed. So in total, 1 went to 6. Okay, And we'll just proceed in this way. I'll do one more. Where does 6 go? You'd say, okay, 6 is fixed by the 3, 1. Then 6 goes to 1, 1 goes to 5. So in total, 6 goes to 5. All right? And so we would just proceed in exactly that way to get that, that cycle. Okay, so we can do the second one in the same way. We have letters, but we don't care so much. 
what, what they are. Uh, let's start with A. And you say, okay, A is skipped by the first two, but then in the third one, A goes to T. All right, where does T go? Well, T, again, is missed by the first two, and it shows up only in the third where T goes to B. Where does B go? So B goes to F, and then F is skipped in the second, but in the third, F goes back to A, so that'll close off the cycle. All right, what are we missing? Well, we have A, B, and T. We don't have, uh, let's say, E. So where does E go? So E is skipped by the BF, then E goes to B, and B goes back to E. So actually, we don't need to do anything with E. We can erase that. Okay, what else is missing? Well, how about F? Well, it's going to have to turn out that F is also mapped to itself, because, well, there's only one thing left, namely F. But let's just check. So where does F go? F first goes to B, then B goes to E, and then E goes to F. So in fact, F does go back to F. So again, we've ended up just coincidentally with a product of cycles, but there's only one factor in that product. Okay, so that's how we can take a product of permutations, which may not be disjoint, and write them as, in this case, there's one cycle, but it could have been a product where they are completely disjoint.